<laughs> Why do artists hate accounting so much? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> when people would ask me, how much is that going to be? I always had the desire to underquote myself. My only part in my accounting is going through my bank statements and I do code my expenses. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on your particular situation, this is the Emerging Artist Podcast, where we help emerging artists start their own business and get their mindset correct to tackle anything that they have set as their goals. I am being joined today, of course, by Sheree Nicole, and I am Scott Markowitz, and we are here to help you, the emerging artist. And today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, <laughs> not... <laughs> really? <laughs> We're going to be talking about accounting today, Cherie. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why do artists hate accounting so much? I always struggled with math. It, I didn't, I don't know. I just didn't understand it. And it took a lot of effort for me to get through math in school. And my brain just doesn't think along that line at all. And I see people that have a passion for it and just as much as I do for art, but that was never one of my skill sets. And excuse me, I think okay. with accounting, in my opinion, I don't think most artists should do their own. <laughs> <laughs> we can both agree on that. Yeah, I think that it's really important to get a professional accountant, at the very least, a bookkeeper. There are bookkeepers, there are accountants. Some bookkeepers are also accountants, but bookkeeper will help keep you straight and narrow month to month and keep track of your expenses and help you with making sure that you are aware <laughs> of what's happening with your money. And that's so important as a fledgling business owner. It is because not having those things taken care of also create a, a lot of anxiety. And I know some artists that have gone years and years and not even filed taxes. And that's not a good position to be in either. That's heavily frowned on by the government. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I myself have, I've told you this story before about me, you know, deciding when I changed from Dry Creek finishing to Sheree Nicole designer finishes, I was going to save money and do my own taxes that year. And that was a disaster. And I ended up filing that I did work in, a, you know, I had a business in a foreign country. So <laughs> So immediately, I, I actually have a CPA that does everything. So my only part in my accounting is going through my bank statements, and I do code my expenses. And then I just take everything in to the CPA and let them take care of it. The other thing, if you live in a state that has sales tax and you're selling anything, so like here in Florida, we have a quarterly report that has to be sent in to make sure that we're reporting any cells that we have in art or anything else that we may sell. And even if you haven't sold anything, you still have to report that to them. And they are very serious, I know, because I got a letter <laughs> when I didn't report. I didn't realize it, so I didn't report one of the one of the quarters because I hadn't sold anything. And yes, they send you a letter very promptly and it was all taken care of, but that's something the CPA also handles. And then just making sure too, that your licensing city, state license, all those things are taken care of your insurance, all the legal business stuff that you need to have done. For instance, if you're doing faux work in High rises are the big area where you need a lot of insurance coverage. And so I carry $2 million for working in a high rise, but then they also oftentimes will want to be additionally insured. Maybe the high rise itself will, and maybe the homeowner as well. So those are all things that you need to have in order before you go to work. There's a lot of legal things that need to be taken care of even if you're just one person there's a lot to be taken care of and it's important to do it because you don't want to start having legal and tax problems that's correct you do not want that 
So how does somebody, when they're starting out their own small business and their primary concern, of course, is getting clients and getting work generated, mm -hmm. how do you suggest they would approach the accounting? Do they, is that step number one? Or is that something that you do after a couple of months of being in business? Or do you do it your second year? I think it should be first thing. I think you should have something in mind. I do know people have, I think there are a lot of apps now that you can have on your phone that does billing and everything for you. And it's not that complicated. But I think if you start out of the gate in your business ahead in that, I think you save yourself a lot of headache instead of having to go back. I would not wait months. I would not wait years. Do you have a, a specific accounting system that you use that you'd recommend? No, okay. I, I don't do any of that at all. What do you? Yeah, I use Quicken for Business. Oh, okay. Yeah, so my process is I use the software to track everything every month. And then on a quarterly basis, I bring it to my CPA. Oh, okay. That's the way that I do it currently. Although I'm thinking about maybe in the next year hiring a bookkeeper to work with me like on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis. But for the time being, I dedicate a couple hours a week to going mm. in and reviewing all the transactions in QuickBooks and making sure that everything is designated properly. The other thing I would recommend that everybody do, and this was something that I have to admit was really difficult for me at the beginning, and I really didn't like doing it, <laughs> but I, I recommend that everybody look at their bank account at least once a day. Oh, yeah. I do that every morning, actually. And I have a track of each month list of every bill I owe. I don't like surprises when it comes yeah. to <laughs> what I owe. I think the reason that I didn't like to look at my bank account is also part of the reason why accounting is not my favorite. And that's just the relationship I have with money, just on a basic level. I, I, when I first started my business, I think my relationship with money was not the healthiest. <laughs> <laughs> Three years later, like now, I feel like I have a very re healthy relationship with money and I feel good about it. But, and tell me if you can relate to this, Cherie, but I felt money was a bad thing. I didn't feel good about charging people money for doing work for them. I, I felt guilty almost when people would ask me, how much is that going to be? I always had the desire to underquote myself Under when I first started. I, I felt I almost felt guilty for asking for money. Now, three mm -hmm. years later, I realized that's like that exchange of value is essential for maintaining a business, obviously, but it's also a healthy way for me to interact with the world. I've done a complete 180 in the last three years about how I relate to money. I didn't want to look at my bank account because it was, you know, back then it was so low. Depressing. <laughs> it, was, it was depressing. <laughs> it was scary. But it was also a reflection of like how I just felt it was a guilty thing to take money from other people. When you were starting out, did you feel it was hard to charge what you were worth? I haven't. And I think the only reason maybe why is because my parents always owned their own businesses growing up and I used to help my mom actually with bookkeeping and I think that's probably hmm. why and I took accounting in school oddly enough <laughs> but <laughs> but I do know it is a typical artist way mindset because one of the aspects of the courses my dad and I took in Seattle with Kelly King, he did a whole um, class on the financial aspect of it. And he had mentioned that the, most artists, they're just so happy and excited that somebody let them paint something on their wall or <laughs> create something for them that they have a really hard time charging. And so I do believe that probably is the normal struggle. I forget who, who it was years ago. But it had a, a lot of impact on me about, and it was about how we think about money and listening to your comments about how you felt about it. It's something that we work really hard for and to have respect for our money and even the way we put it in our wallet or our purse is an indication of whether or not we have respect 
for our hard-earned money? Do we take it and just wad it in, stuff it in different places in our purse, or is it neatly stacked together and put nice and neat in the wallet? And so actually, whenever I put money in my wallet, I always think about that. Am I showing respect for my hard-earned money? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I, for me, personally, I like to make sure that all the bills are facing the same way. <laughs> right? And I put the larger de- denomination bills in the back yes. and the smaller denomination bills in the front. I always keep it maintained like that. But I never thought of it that way, that that was showing respect to your money. And that was something that my father taught me. Hmm. My father owned a small restaurant outside of New York City. And much of the things I thought I knew about money, I learned from him and, and his business. And going back real quick, I think that a lot of artists have that fear for charging it is because, oh, this is something I love. So mm-hmm. I shouldn't I shouldn't charge for something that that I love so much. Like this is I'm just so happy that I get to do it. I love that you said that. Right? But then the other aspect I think for a lot of artists is that we have this story that earning money needs to be hard because that's what I learned from my father. My father worked seven days a week. He only took a vacation once a year. Wow. And the rest of the year he worked seven days a week and being in the restaurant business that's a hard thing to do. It was he was hard work. Yeah, he was in the trenches. And so like the story I had growing up was that to make money, you have to really work very hard. I think that was really the core of why it was so difficult for me to charge. That makes sense. Because I was like, this is not hard. This is easy and it's fun. Yeah. And so three years later, though, I, I recognize that what I'm doing is something that is very valuable in that bigger picture of value exchange that is our economy, I need to be respectful of how much, not the time and effort that I'm putting in or how much fun is the factor, but how much value is my product giving them? How much pleasure or how much utility is it giving Mm -hmm. to them? And so what's the cash value of that? In my business, I do a lot of work for other businesses. And so there happens to be a tremendous amount of value because they're using the art that I make to attract customers for their business and that equals a lot of money for them. So yeah, it's accounting. Did you think that talking about accounting would stir up other, all these money other emotions? <laughs> yeah. It it is interesting. Yeah. The way that we all look at money and how it does also tie to growing up and our roots as as a family. My dad always worked very physically hard. He was a logger for more than half his life and then he switched to drywall for the other half and I always saw him work very hard and I do appreciate yeah that's sometimes when we think if we're doing something that we love and there there have been jobs where I have made really good money in a very short period of time and sometimes it does give me a twinge of maybe I should lessen the bill because it, <laughs> it took me less time. But I wasn't doing the project based on my time. You, I'm bringing them something that they want. Yeah. And I'm adding value to their home. And with you, you're adding value to my business. And I'm excited to see where all this goes and, and our podcasts and coaching and all that. So it's not about that only people that work physically exhaustingly really hard are deserving of money (laughs) yeah it's simply not true it's just it's simply not true it's it's a misconception and it's something that our popular media perpetuates too if you look at popular movies and stuff there's the villain half the time is super rich yeah and and, and that's true and the protagonist is like coming from a much lower income status than the villain is. And so it's like this underlying theme that money is evil and it's the root of evil. And it's really not true. What you do with money can be good or bad, but money itself is 100% neutral. <laughs> and it's a means to an end. It's it's a means to provide you with the things that you want in your life, with the lifestyle that you want, with your business goals, all that. I think a a lot of people, I know myself growing up, even though I helped with accounting, my parents didn't really teach us personal money management. My dad's mom, my grandmother, however, I used to work with her. She made jewelry. She was an artist and she would do 
fairs and different shows, jewelry shows. And she got me started in just a little jewelry business. And I would have a stand with her. And she made me keep a physical ledger. And she would buy the supplies. So whenever I would sell things, then that money would come off of the supplies. <laughs> and I would come away with like very little at the end of the <laughs> show, which is depressing. But it taught me very quickly about business. And I think if you're somebody that hasn't had maybe a background in money management or your family, just things that you just weren't taught yeah. growing up, I think mm-hmm. it'd be wise to seek out some help in those areas especially if you haven't been used to making very much money and then your career is becoming such that you are what are you doing with that are you making wise decisions for your future with it and are you paying your taxes that's super important too You keep coming back to that. I keep coming back to taxes, yes. That's because I just had to make quarterly payment last month. Yeah, me too. That was not fun. Yeah. So, But all those things are all important to take care of, for sure. It is. Speaking to that specific issue, I don't know if you do this, but I have started in the last, I'd say, like year or so, I've started creating a separate account specifically for the purpose of paying my taxes off. Every time my clients pay their invoice, I take a 15% right off the top and I put it into my tax account. That's smart. And yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that way, because because the nature of art, I think, is not as predictable in terms of your income. Some quarters I've made a lot of money and some quarters I've made much less. Mm-hmm. So I learned that in the lean months, if I didn't have any savings dedicated to taxes, it was really difficult to pay that quarterly tax. Is there anything else that you'd like to add in terms of accounting? Not necessarily on accounting, but I think one of the things that is important to go hand in hand with making money is generosity and doing what you can to help other people as well. Um, Whether that be individuals, friends, family that you know that may be struggling in some way or need help in some way. Is there something that you can do to make their life a little bit easier? Is there a charity that you're interested in? I think generosity needs to be a part of how we handle money. Oh, I love that. So do you have a system through which you're you're able to facilitate your generosity? And is that done specifically through your business? No, not through my business. I do have friends that I'm aware of certain situations. And so I'll do different things to help them. And I like to do things anonymously as well. So oh, that's really interesting. I was raised in a Jewish household. Mm-hmm. And according to the Jewish tradition, the purest form of generosity is when the donor remains anonymous and the recipient remains unknown to the donor. I'd like that. Yeah. That's very nice. And from when you think about it from the standpoint of the person who's receiving the gifts, it can also have the reverse effect. It can make them feel bad about themselves if they yeah. have to be the recipient of charity. So I think that's really, I think that's a, an important thing to consider. Like sometimes donating your time to be able to help somebody better themselves is the best thing you can do for them mm-hmm. as opposed to just giving them some kind of financial aid. But I agree. I love that you brought generosity up into that discussion. If you guys would like to learn more about your relationship with money and how accounting can help your business, I strongly urge you to reach out to Sheree Nicole. The best way to do that is to go to ShereeNicole.com. That's S-H-I-R-E-N-I-C-H-O-L-E.com. There you can engage with Sheree through uh, some of her courses. Of course, the coaching is phenomenal. I would recommend that. And I invite anybody who also perhaps wants to start a photography or video business to reach out to me, Scott Markowitz. And the best way to do that is to go to reinventionstudiolab.com. And there you'll find some resources and some ways to interact with me. And I would love to be your coach as, as well. Sheree, I know you're anxious to help some of the emerging artists out there with their fledgling businesses. And we're just wishing you a great rest of your day and 
to all those emerging artists. What, what do you have to say, Cherie? Oh, keep on creating. Be creative every day. That's it. All right, guys. Have a fantastic rest of your day. <laughs>